Hi and welcome to Joe's Camera. In this program I'm going to do once again visit images of the 27th of January 2017. I'm going to really look at the images like I've said in the other programs. Uh, once you come back from the field you look at the images and you select the ones that, that you want to edit um, that strikes you and I found that a couple of years later if you do revisit the images again that um, with new plugins that's on on board and so on it makes life uh, much easier you discover images that were there were average or normal images or there's defects in the form of too grainy or a little bit out of focus in the, there are plugins that that can really make some of that images stand out and even better than the initial straightforward color images that you've initially thought that you should edit so what i'm going to go just through the the images of 2017, the trip that we've had over there. I think it'll be about three programs. Quickly scan over the images and then select the ones that, and maybe chat a bit about some of the images, and skip the images that I know. Um, it's about it's a bit deceptive because that's the ones that you normally skip that you discover later on if you go through them slowly one for one that you discover images. But I'm going to go through uh, where there's an image that's been uh, seriously edited um, by the editor, you know, we'll keep that separate. Um, I'll quickly touch on a plugin to show you that the average image, you know, could be done or could be worked. And uh, so let's visit. Um, it's always good to go back a couple of years, go look at the photos because then it's revisiting or reliving that photos that you've that you got. So in this image, the first ones I got was just um, the ground squirrel and entertain us all the time is one of the true desert animals that's um, kidneys uh, so refined that its urine is about it's about a syrup and it it loses basically no moist even through urine and then it's got that magnificent tail that hides it uh, from the sun and therefore save a lot of the moist that would otherwise have been lost through the skin uh, through perspiration and here you can look at the very nice backlit you can look at the the detail of the of the tail itself how thin it is and how much hair and look how the hair splits at the points to maximize the shade on the body it's not just a single layer the hair actually split split at the top like a porcupine so look at the big eyes good eyesight aggressive little little boikies and um, always makes for an interesting picture this one's i'm not going to take because the tail on that one has been cut and over here the, the legs have been cut um, this one over here is most probably a nice portrait uh, although the tail's also been cut but uh, nice out of focus at the back um, young pale chanting gossok also very nice color it's just the green um, top of the color and then the the beige earthy colors of of the nest that it's sitting in and then the portrait of course it should be cut over here the bit of dead space on the right hand side so that there's more space towards where the face is looking but a very clean portrait and very very sharp you can look at the eye so the two images are that and then there's two lionesses and here's a series of lion, male lion that we got. Uh, a very old one, as you can see the, look at the teeth, it's gone. Good attention on the eye, straight into the lens to myself, but probably a nice image of an old lion, but not that aesthetic. <coughs> Let's quickly go through them, nothing exceptional there. There's a female that's playing, and there, this one is standing in the flowers, which is quite unique. Uh, very soft light. Let's open it up in Photoshop. That's the one that I think we have sort of touched on in the, in, in the previous year's editing. But that's beautiful colors, but you can see the white is not that white, and there's a bit of a hue in this so i think with a normal with a normal uh, basic 
Photoshop edit, if we just bring that levels back in, then um, it brings out the whites and it separates the oranges and the, the color on the line is is more true to the, the real. So let's take this. Of course, I could um, go adjustment and see what saturation will do. Saturation brings out the orange and the white. Let's look at blacks, black and white. That's what the normal black and white would do. If we push the reds, look how we we're looking for the white whites, um, all the tones through to the black blacks. So there's very evenly colored black and white. If we push the reds, the whites comes out, and even the white on the flowers comes out, and much better. The yellows will bring out the yellow grasses in the background. The blues we're not going to touch. And there's a basic black and white. So if we undo the black and white and we go to, for instance, a, that's a basic edit. And let's see what we discover on, a, on the various plugins. Now the plugins are going to push the contrast. They're going to uh, they're going to um, push the saturation. There's going to be vignetting. There's going to be graduate filters already on. Uh, that's going to save us a couple of hours of edit. And sometimes they don't work. They're too harsh or they're overpowering. But a lot of the times it is one of the surprise packages to open the plugins and just click along and see that one has unfortunately got a graduate still on with the previous use. Let's take, for instance, the contrast color range that they got. And... Look how beautiful the white comes out. It's a very subtle um, red contrast um, push and the line looks much better. That's a yellow green, that's a blue tint and that's a magenta. So the red one is a very, is a very beautiful edit. Not that overpowering. Um, let's look at the brilliant or the warm edits that they got in the plugin. The neutral is once again beautiful. Look how the increase in saturation comes out. We've done exactly the same, but it's it's warm. The eyes are popping out. The greens are green in the specific edit. That's what they call perceptual saturation. Perceptual saturation a bit stronger. Cool colors and warm colors. Now, if you look at the cool, warm colors and the cool colors, you know, you can pick any one of those images and even the subtle neutral one on the colors and it's going to take you very long to, to edit that. So we've just, at the flick of a button, um, picked very good, very good images. So there we go, the brilliant. And the increase in saturation looks like that sun is really low onto the line and it's beautiful. I'm going to pick that image, just open it up in Photoshop, just to get back to the um, to the plugin, the black and white. We've looked at the normal edit on Photoshop. That was the initial image. That was with the warmth. And what we do now is we're going to go black and white and more creative black and white and look at some fine art production of this image. Once again, this is in the wet season, so the flowers are out. And um, this I call this flowers the Milky Way. It's a it's a bunch of a bunch of small white star like flowers on a on a bunch like that. So it looks like the Milky Way. There's your normal black and one black and white plugins. Um, that's the neutral one in the plugin. This is an underexposed, uh, one-stop underexposed black and white image. Uh, extra plus one stop. A high contrast image. And if we go through the left-hand side, we can see which ones are at the glance not going to work. That one's overpowering. That one's overpowering white. The low-key start getting business, yeah. That's a specific 
Loki 2, which is a dark rendition. This is where the gadget comes in. The gadget helps a lot in that it in that it once again it focuses the eye on the flowers and the line as soon as you put the gadget in. It removes some of that background that's that one subconsciously focuses on. Um, the full dynamic range is beautiful in this instance as you can see the line actually pops from the background where and the other images it's part of the background so the full dynamic range it pops out with the flowers full spectrum also a good one I could very easily select that but I want to go for for this specific one for artistic one which is which is my favorite of here with a v netting in and it absolutely concentrates on the line so let's go back to the photo strip Same line, the sun's coming up. I'm going to skip over them. There's nothing specific here. The two lionesses are, young cubs are, are playing. Look at that, looking straight into each other's eyes, but the one's eyes hidden. Otherwise, I would have used it. Aina, rare sight. Jackals, let's go over them. Beautiful little meerkat. Once again, nothing exceptional. It is record shots, um, looking for a nice pose or something different. So I'm going to skip them. Nice sighting over here. And we got this young male lion at the pride of his, um, of his life. Look at that eyes. I would like to know what line this is, but it's, today there's a, two brothers that's got the same, about the same age and the same eyes and the same aggression. If you look at those eyes, they're looking at a car or a vehicle. And this one is beautiful. It's looking straight at us, especially this one. So this one is one that one would also edit uh, simply because of the portrait. Look at the nice young mane and the eyes straight onto us. Here it's very close up. It's right next to the road. Very funny image. Smelling the grass, licking the grass. Um, looking at marking of territories, you can definitely pick up something in this in this cross. But a beautiful look at that eyes. It's it's, it's zooming right onto an object. This one similar. This is another image we can do in a in a black and white, um, or even the color. So let's see if we pick that image and we do a. straight edit and crop it and let's take a color plugin once in instead of editing it very soft atmosphere that the lines got that could look at that other line is smelling flowers removing that harsh image of the desert line there's the color once again Let's take the contrast range, uh, the red one, beautiful portrait, as is. What I like is that the eyes of the line always is accentuated. In this plugin, you can see that the top one, the eyes are more concentrated on, so that piercing line of eyes of the lines stands out. The next one, it's even worse, the blue and the magenta even worse. So in in the color contrast, the red one is the one that sticks out. There's another beautiful one. One could edit that. Look at that face of the one at the back there, smelling the, the grasses. Uh, so it tells you a story. Very nice portrait if you zoom in. Let's select this one. It's very close in, just the eyes and the, the mouth. I want to do a black and white on this one. Neutral black and white, underexposed, overexposed, high contrast. Quickly at, at a glance on the left hand side, the high structure looks looks fine, but overexposed. Sometimes this low key works because of all the whites and that dark area on the face. This one works. You'll see every image 
one of the plugins works with individual images um, more than with the others. That one's quite sharp. Look what this dynamic smooth is doing. It's smoothing out everything else and keeping that also a different image altogether. So one would pick one image the one day and the other day you would pick another image. So artistic they are. Once again, I like the artistic rendition. There's another one, a noir that just accentuates the nucleus of the subject, the eyes in this instance. Penal, which is very artistic. Back into the film strip, some giraffe fighting. Beautiful pose, um, good portrait if one wants, but and there's a bit of necking taking place. This is a sunset we got at Tuerufu, and I think I've discussed it on another program where we had probably the most fantastic, this is unedited, exactly the hue and the colours that the sun made the clouds. Absolutely mind-boggling if I could get this clouds behind the serious aesthetic object it's to a on the other side look at this and the Botswana camp on the other side image like this is, is something that one can easily overlook and um, that is very simple I get that can work very good with a plug-in, I can see that at a distance. So already, if you remove that distractions on the on the outside, and we go and make it black and white because it's very too tonish, and make it black and white, it is a fine art image that stands out from even all the others with the good sunsets that I've seen earlier on. So there, you can already see the black and white is a beautiful image. Now look at what that does underexposed. The underexposed plugin makes it absolutely beautiful black and white. Let's look at the high structure. Um, of, of course, we will clean up the dirty spots. High structure and look at what that does. A graduate filter on it. It's not really necessary because of that, there's a full dynamic range. Look at that contrast, it lights up the foreground. Some would say maybe too much. And this is the fine art plugin, and you can see why it's fine art plugin because it works 100% um, with this image. Full contrast range, um, might like to look too much, dark sepia, soft sepia, and my favorite, that's fine art. Okay, carrying on from that image, I'm quite, that's one of the ones I've just discovered, so I actually like that a lot. At first, it had too much distraction on the on the sides, this one is actually open. It was just that clouds on the left hand side that I cut over there because it doesn't complete the image. I cut that over there and also got rid of that distracting image and also on the right hand side that pin that looks that to me is the focus. Right, so carry on. These are mostly panos that were done. And there's a rainstorm, a thunderstorm that I got on the opposite side. These ones have been um, edited by Hardis and he will slot them in so I don't have to edit them. But these are all beautiful rain clouds that the fact that you got foreground, if you bring that out, together with this Closer clouds over here, not too far from us, and then the further cloud 
creates a bit of a three-dimensional thing always in clouds. We've got close clouds and further clouds, and then the cumulonimbus quite far away. Quite a few of them. I've done that so that you can burn this out in the foreground and get some green. I've done some where I've exposed like that, where you expose just the foreground, and we can do a, um, a composite like these ones over here to be able to composite with the ones on top over there. So you take the top layer of that and you take the bottom layer of that and you've got a perfect image seeing that it's the same edge, it's got the same horizon. So beautiful sight, this rain that's playing on the distance. You can see that too. I've done that two images. So you take the bottom of that and stick it to that top. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it and see you at the next one.